you're watching Power Nation. Today on Carcass, it's time to upgrade the handling on our 78 Datsun 280Z with stronger suspension all the way around. We'll add a new differential to help handle our six-speed transmission and install beefier rotors and brakes. Plus, we'll see what accessories Nismo has to offer for your Nissan. Hey guys, welcome to Carcass. Well, we're well underway on our Datsun 280Z project. We've got the engine out and the transmission out, and we've even got them cleaned up. Now it's time to work on one thing that we love to do the most, and that is suspension work. And this car had pretty good suspension for its day, but we do have some better stuff to put under it. So we have to get everything out from underneath. And the only thing we have to do up top is just get the nuts off the top of the struts, but otherwise we'll get the car up and get everything out. All right, so now we're on the bottom. Um, pretty simple down here too. We just gotta get the e-brake cables disconnected, get the sway bar disconnected from the body itself, and then there are 10 bolts holding the subframe in. So we'll kind of get those loose, bring the car down a little bit, um, get something to roll out the subframe on, and that'll be it. I'm gonna lower the jack down mm -hmm. slowly. I don't think it's gonna come out completely. All right. Uh, Jack's off completely. Here, I'll step on it a little bit. Oh, wait. It's almost just kind of stuck on those studs, right? Yeah. Um, let I'll me do. get a pry bar. Yeah. I'll try to rotate the front up. There it goes. That did it. So now I'm gonna go back down. With the jack, you can race the car up too at that point. Okay. Okay. Brake cables, you're good. Good? Yeah, keep going. Yeah, that should do it. I do really like suffering cars because they are this easy to take apart. You don't have to take off each individual component. You just take out one big thing, and then you're ready to move on. So the rear suspension that we pulled out of the Datsun is pretty unique in the fact that it's rear independent suspension. This is more commonly what you would find in the front of a newer car or an SUV or a crossover. The way that this system works, you have to have something in the center to move the car forward. That's our differential here. Then we have two separate axle shafts, and then connected to that, we have two separate hubs, and all of this can move independently from each other to give you a better ride. Now, this was commonly found in the front of some vehicles, but to be found in the back of an older vehicle is pretty uncommon. So when it came time for us to do an upgrade, we had to go to the right spot. And that place is called Apex Engineered. Now, these guys specialize in parts for your Datsun and your Nissans from 240, 260, 280, and even beyond that. Now our old rear suspension is big and bulky and very heavy and Apex builds all of their stuff out of steel tubing so it's very lightweight and it's very strong. We have their front and their rear suspension set up but in the rear we've got their lower control arms, we've got their subframe here and we even have the hubs so you can run a different set of coilovers. Now we took our kit one step further and we're gonna be using some parts out of a newer Z. So Apex built their rear subframe to handle a different rear diff and we're gonna be doing the hubs with a different brake upgrade a little bit later. Now before I get all of this stuff assembled and installed, I got a whole bunch of cleaning I gotta do underneath our Z. 
We finish installing our rear suspension with new coilovers and upgraded axle shafts. Hey guys, welcome back. Now during the break, we took care of a couple things. Now Apex sends their cross member and it fits a 240, a 260, and a 280. Now even though those are all considered the S chassis, there are some variants in those chassis that we had to look at. So we had to come up here and kind of notch into this rear cross member on the body here to fit the differential that we're running. Now this diff is out of a 370Z and we got this one directly from Nissan and the subframe is actually built to accept this differential. It's going to work perfect in our car and it goes up here and installs very simple with these two studs and we've got a couple of clamps. So we'll get this into place and we'll keep moving forward. be a little tricky to get in here what we'll do is get the bolts started and we'll slowly tighten down both sides and the back and we'll slowly draw everybody up and then we'll move on to the control arms Now that we have the lower control arm installed, it's time to move on to this upright. Now, Datsun is a little unique in the fact that they actually have coilovers and shocks that weld onto their uprights. So, we're going to be running a set of BC Racing coilovers. Now, Apex makes their uprights to use a bunch of different manufacturers of coilovers. So, what we need to do with our coilover is set it over the top of the upright. And then we need to take a measurement between the bottom of the coilover and what is exposed here of the metal. What we're going to do then is transfer that distance to the top of this upright and we're going to end up cutting that off because the main goal here is to get the bottom of our coilover to sit right at the edge of this exposed metal. So we'll go ahead and take that measurement and then we're going to set everything in the car and then we'll just tack it into place for now. Then we'll get the car on the ground, see if we like how it sits and then we can weld everything up from there. Roughly five eighths of an inch, I think. So now we'll get this into place and then we'll go up top and put the coil over in and then we'll get everything kind of lined up. Now we'll slide this together. I'll hold it up here with this screw jack. Then I'm going to go grab the TIG welder. We're just going to put a tack on it. That way we can get both sides done and we'll even do the front. Set the car down on the ground and get a good feel of what it looks like. Then we can always come back and weld everything up. Okay, now that we have the coilovers in the car, we're going to move on to the axle shafts. Now this is a stock CV axle from the 370Z that we got from Nissan, but Apex sends you a different center section to make this the correct length. I just need to tear this apart, switch out the center section, and we'll get this in the car. Okay, now there's a little snap ring on the end of the axle shaft here. Use our snap ring pliers. Try not to send that sailing across the room. And then this side just pulls off. There should. There it goes. I'm just gonna do that to the other side too. All right, before we assemble the new axle shaft, we're gonna go ahead and clean all these parts up. Now let's go wipe them down. We'll assemble the axle. Okay, so we'll start assembling our axle now. Now we're not gonna put the boots on because this is kind of a mock-up stage. We wanna make sure everything fits. Once we know it fits, then we'll go ahead and take it all back apart, add some fresh grease, and then put the boots on it. All right, that's all the way down. I'll put the C-clip on. 
we'll slide that part in and put the big C-clip on. And all we have to do is put the top C-clip in like this and then kind of hammer the other end on. There, that bottomed out. Now we can go put it in the car. Should be able to fish this all up and in here without taking anything back apart. And the last thing to go on is the hub that we got from Nissan from the 370. We also have the backing plate with the e-brake shoes and then this caliper bracket from Apex. Everything should slide right on. We'll bolt it up. Everything should fit. And then we'll have to just move on to the other side. We show you some of the performance accessories that Nismo has to offer for your Nissan. Hey everyone, welcome back to the shop. Jeremy and I have made a lot of good headway on our 280Z. We've gotten the rear suspension buttoned up and today we have a special guest with us. We have Jim from Nismo and he's gonna kind of talk to us about who they are and what they offer. So Jim, what is Nismo? That is a great question, Jimmy. Nismo is a bit of an enigma to not only some of our employees, but the world. Nismo is a lot of different things to a lot of different people. A lot of our customers see us as sort of like one or two things, whether we are just making cars or we're making parts, but there's a lot that goes behind the scenes. Nismo sort of got started in the 80s, uh, kind of like just supporting all the racing that Nissan wanted to do to really get competitive. And you really started to see parts coming out of Nismo into uh, vehicles in around 1989 on the R32 and S13 platforms. And that's where you will see some of the parts that, that we offer. On the other side of that, there's a whole team in Japan that makes cars. So they're the guys that take a uh, 370Z and make a Nismo 370Z, or they take a GTR and they make it a Nismo GTR, et cetera, et cetera. There's, there's just a whole group of really smart guys that do a great job of put, putting these cars together and taking them to the next level. Cool, and so what is your role at Nismo then? It's a great question. Uh, still learning. Uh, basically stateside, I'm part of what's called Nissan Motorsports, which is also kind of like the U.S. division of Nissan. There's Nismo Japan, that's the Amori factory. That's where you see all the cool shots where like guys from different car magazines go and it's like it's a holy grail or whatever. Yeah. Stateside, it's not quite as glamorous, but we're working on it. Uh, but for me, we started off as a mom and pop shop. So that was like if dealers knew or pro shops knew that they could get some parts or some JDM accessories or OE type parts, they would come to us and order them. And what we've done this year is really start to transition from that mom and pop design to how can we get parts into the uh, warehouses that Nissan operates so that we can get parts to our dealers and ultimately to our customers. Okay, cool. And that's happened this year, so anything you want to order, you can ask your dealer, and if you can't get it, make it make the request and we'll work on you know trying to get those parts sweet and so on the table here we've got some of what you guys offer and it's kind of in i would say three different categories we have like the really high level performance stuff we have more accessories and then we have like the jdm just oe style stuff so what is like what is this down here what what do you guys offer okay so this is kind of highlighting some of the uh, jdm oem parts that if you had a jdm car that you needed to fix or if you had a u.s car that you wanted to upgrade so these taillights could fit in a hatchback S13, so that's a US 240SX. They come from a 180SX. So Japan, unlike the States, got a lot of cool drive lines and parts and accessories. And as an enthusiast, I was one that just wanted to get some of those JDM parts, add some flair to my car, sure. and just kind of stand out. That's, that's I think, as an enthusiast, as a Nismo head, that's, the, that's, what, that's just what we all want. Yeah, cool. And in parallel to that, we also have things like, you know, a thin diff, diff cover if you have a 370Z, some clear taillights, but there's tons and tons and tons of OE parts. So mm -hmm. if you have that R33 that you just imported and you scuffed the front bumper or you broke an arrow or you need an intercooler, sure. these are the things that might be really hard to come by, but those are things we've really worked on trying to get into our supply chain so that if a customer needs it, we can meet that demand. Cool. And so let's say you have maybe a Sentra that's less uh, performance oriented or something, you guys just have straight up accessories just to kind of tastefully do your own thing with your car. Sometimes it's tasteful, sometimes maybe it's not so tasteful. <laughs> yeah. 
there's there's a place for everybody in Nismo, and that's yeah. what I really I really like. So if you have a Versa, if you have a Leaf, like there's an engineer I work with who has a Leaf, and he kits it out, and there's a part of you that goes, is that wrong? And there's a part of you that goes, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yeah. And this is where you can add things like lug nuts, or you could add a shifter, oil filler cap, these don't add horsepower per se, but you could tell your friends they do, and it's just kind of fun. Yeah. And here is something that I would personally put on my own car. It's a GT um, titanium uh, shift knob, straight straight from Nismo Japan. This okay. might look really nice on your car. Might have to steal that. I'll leave it here just in case. <laughs> and outside of all of that, so say you're not quite sure where you land, mm -hmm. you like the brand, you like the idea, Maybe your girlfriend likes the logo and you're looking for some clothing. Personalization is great here. So mm -hmm. if you wanted a t-shirt like this, if you wanted to have a coffee mug at your desk just to kind of add some revs to your coffee, or if you wanted some sunglasses, there, there's, there's tons and tons of kit we have available. So if you just wanted to spruce up your life a little bit, you can have any, anything you want. Very nice. And so back here, we've got a 370Z that's got some Nismo stuff on. It's got wheels, has a little carbon cover panel on one of the pillars, mirrors, and so you guys offer a lot for a lot of different platforms yes. and moving more onto the performance side, you guys have like some really high level stuff like huge brakes, turbos, wheels. What does that look like at Nismo? Well, this is sort of getting into the more of the performance side. So this is kind of like JDM and then you accessorize it and yep. then you're like, I want to take it to the next level. Mm -hmm. And that's where people like me that like to mod cars in your garage, you'll see this and you go, oh, that's an S15 GT28 turbo. I'd like that for my S15 that I'm importing. Yeah. Or you have a Sentra and it has an SR20 and you're like, that makes sense. And you bolt it on and you make it work. Possibly you get some injectors right. and you bring it all together with probably some engine management unless you got a JDM ECU. But aside from that side of it, you also have things like these uh, 370Z big brakes. So these are six pot front calipers and vented rotors. It's all part of a big kit. So if there's a if there's a person that has a 370 and they want to turn it into just a time attack vehicle, they want to track it, or they really just like how they how those look and when they go to the grocery store, they just want to stop on a dime. Yeah. That does it. Of course, intakes, we also have all kinds of other kit. And at the end, the sort of holy grail for our Nissan Nismo customers is the LM GT4 wheels. Cool. So those are wheels that we get about once a year. Uh, they're special order. We usually sell through them pretty quick, but everybody seems to want those. And then also coming out is these are these LM RS1 wheels here in the back that are on this Z car. Yeah as another option. So if a customer maybe likes that, but maybe it's not on their price point or maybe doesn't work with the lines of their car, we have lots and lots of other wheel options for right. our customers. Yeah, I think that's awesome that you guys offer this stuff and not only for a lot of different platforms, but you can just go to your dealer and get that kind of thing. So, so if you guys have any Nissan projects, make sure you check out Nismo because you can go straight to your dealer and order it, or you can go to nismoparts.nissanusa to get your stuff. Let's check out this car, because I right. haven't walked around it all the way, but it's got some. Coming up, our Z gets a bigger brake and rotor combination. Plus, we fit our new wheels and tires designed for style and performance. Now, we have the rear suspension already installed from Apex, and we went ahead and did the same thing up front. Now, the big component of their front suspension is this tubular cross member. They have it set up so you guys can run a couple different series of engines. If you choose to do so, you just use a different engine mount. You can run an RB, 2JZ, an LS, or in our case, the L28. Plus, they have these brackets that run back here to the tension bar mount, so it makes this setup extremely rigid. Now, traveling out from there, we have a fully adjustable aluminum tension bar. That means we can set up our suspension just the way that we like it. Plus, we're running their Apex Quick Steer Knuckles. We have their hub mounts here. We're running a set of BC coilovers, just like in the back. Now, just like in the back, we're running a bunch of different stuff from a 370Z. That's the same thing we're doing up front. We're using a set of their front hubs. And since all the hubs match all the way around the car, we're gonna be running a set of 370Z brakes as well. Now, this brake setup is gonna be a huge upgrade over the stock brakes on the Datsun for two good reasons. One, both front and rear rotors measure in at a whopping 14 inches. Plus, the front calipers are a four piston caliper and the rear calipers are dual piston calipers. Now, this setup is out of a 370Z Sport and Apex builds their kits, so this stuff bolts directly into place. So let's get started. Slide this caliper on here, get it to fit, put some bolts in it, and we'll be done.
To get our Datsun back on the ground, we have a brand new set of wheels and tires with Rota's RKRs in a 17 by 9.5 and, and Continental's brand new Extreme Contact Force in a 255 4017. These tires are really cool because they are an ultra high performance summer tire, but also designed for endurance racing. They feature a 200 tread wear rating. So if we decide to take our car and do some spirited driving, the car's gonna have no problem gripping in the turns. But let's say we take it to a track, which this car is very capable of now with the new suspension. These tires can go lap after lap. They'll handle the heat and they'll give us consistent lap times. These tires also feature their Sport Plus technology, which gives better grip and handling in wet conditions and better tread life. To get these on here, we have longer wheel studs from ARP, a bare brakes wheel spacer, and some Dorman lug nuts that we got from Summit Racing. So we've kind of mocked this up before and we might have to go a little bit thicker on the wheel spacer. Uh, these brakes are huge, so um, we just want to make sure we have enough clearance for when everything heats up and it kind of expands. All right, let's get a look at it with all the weight on it. I like the tread design. Yeah, no, it, the tires look cool. It fits yeah. the car very, very well. Mm -hmm. Get it all the way down on the ground here once and see. Yeah. Is that it? Yeah, we might be on the lift still. Yeah, we're still on the hoist, so it would yeah. go lower than this yet. Yeah. And once we get the alignment set and get the tires kind of tilted in with the camber and everything, the flares should cover it. Should look good. Yeah. What do you think? We wrap it up for the day? Uh, let's put on the wheel chocks and Yeah, get we a can do look. that. Yeah. If you guys like anything you've seen on the show today, check out Power Nation TV. I'll grab the wheel jumps.